Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the studios of Grafton Community Television at 26 Providence Road. This is Meet the Candidate. I'm Bob DeToma. My guest in studio today is Jim Davidson. He is running for one of the open slots on the planning board this coming spring election. Welcome to the studio. Thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. It's our pleasure. So we're going to give you a few minutes to introduce yourself to the people of Grafton because there aren't a lot of people who are going to know who you are. They want to know everything about you, every little detail. We'll give you a few minutes to do that. Where are you from? Are you a lifelong resident? What do you do for work? We'll take over from there. Thanks. I, I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, so I'll, I'll start with just recent. So I grew up on the Cape. I lived in Boston for about 10 years. And then I, during the pandemic, I was, um, I, my girlfriend at the time was from Grafton. And when everything went into lockdown mode, it was just a, everyone was remote. So I kind of moved into to Grafton. And uh, but the rest was history. It's been here ever since. We um, ended up getting married towards the end of 2021. We, my wife gave birth to a beautiful baby girl last August, and uh, so yeah, so that's been taking up most of my my free time at the moment. Is we've just been going out, going on walks, doing uh, reading, visiting the library. So it's it's been a great time. Okay. And uh, what is it you do for work, Jim? Yeah, so I I really come from um, lots of different backgrounds. When I was younger, I used to be in the restaurant industry. I was also a aircraft mechanic for the Air Force Reserves and. Most recently, now I work in the uh, in the technology sector. Okay, what kind of aircraft did you work on? The uh, the C five. So oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> that must have been a challenge. Those things are giant. Yeah. So for people not familiar with the C five, that's the the largest aircraft in the force. It's it's there's some newer aircraft now, but it's it's still the largest one. Uh, big cargo airplane. So mm. and you uh, did your duty out in Westover? Correct. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, had a six-year contract with them. It's going back and forth every weekend. So the classic weekend warrior mm -hmm. schedule. And after the Air Force and the C-5, then what? Yeah, so um, it, it's uh, at the same time I was doing my MBA at Boston University. And then, so it, it's funny, in 2020, uh, the company I was working for at the time, when everything went into lockdown, they kind of went into skeleton mode. And no places were really hiring at the time, so I'm not one to kind of just sit back. So I ended up buying a truck and started a moving company right here in Grafton. Ah. What was the name of the company? Davidson Moving. Oh, okay, <laughs> just keeping it simple. All right. Yeah, so it was a great time. It was, um, I got to move people all across the state. I hired a local crew of workers right, right in the area. And pretty much from all the summer of 2020 and the spring of 2021, we were just moving people in and out of uh, in and out of the state. And uh, that must have been a challenge, because y you think about how fearful everybody was with COVID, and and y you're going into people's homes and moving their furniture. I mean, you, did you guys put on Tyvek suits, or how did you handle it? Yeah, it's a, it was a, it really an interesting time, and the reason why I chose moving because at the time, move, the transportation industry was one of the few industries actually that wasn't impacted by a lot of the COVID uh, restrictions. So that that was one that made sense, and then there was a lot of other folks that were uh, laid off from their regular jobs and you know looking to to make ends meet during the time. So we all kind of got together and you know formed a great team, and we still get together, we still talk. So mm. really formed a, a great team and. Once uh, things started to open back up in the spring of 2021, we were like, okay, now it's time to kind of get back to our, our regular uh, jobs mm -hmm. here. Wow. Without naming names, what was the most challenging thing about moving people around? So, yeah, it's, uh, you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, we've had everything from pianos to 800-pound gun cases to armoires that we have to move upstairs. Uh, each home has their own unique kind of challenges to it. So sometimes you have to move things to really like the third or fourth floor where there's not really a way to go up through the, through the stairs. So you have to do a little bit of lifting over the balcony. So there's all sorts of unforeseen obstacles that you have to deal with on the fly. Mm. Do you ever have a piece of furniture you just couldn't get to the fourth floor? Yeah, th there was one where um, we, yeah, we, d we did a move and we just weren't prepared for it. If we had known that that was going to be the the 
the case, we would have had the proper equipment for it to, to get it up. But, um, but yeah, pretty much we tried to go through the stair, stairway and one of the stairways was just so narrow that <laughs> we, had to, we had to bring the couch back. So if I was going to start a moving company and I called you for advice, what would you tell me? What would be the first thing you'd warn me about? <laughs> De definitely um, learn a lot of the techniques. I think it's huge it, it, for me. So I was, when I was doing it, I was managing a lot of the, the back end stuff with the, the moving company, dealing with the insurance, the truck, um, all that sort of stuff. But having guys that know the ins and outs of the moving industry, I mean, just knowing how to move things so they don't get damaged or uh, so you're not wearing it yourself out at the end of the day. There's so much technique that goes into it. So really having a strong partner, someone that's there on the operations side was, is huge. Mm -hmm. Walk us through the decision to uh, to run for uh, planning board here in Grafton. What kind of what kind of experience do you bring to the table if elected? Well, you, I imagine you're running on a post, so I imagine you'll <laughs> make it. What kind of experiences do you bring to the table as far as planning goes? Yeah, so great great question, and uh, it's funny. So as I was moving people, I started to notice a trend that a lot more people were moving out of the state than were moving into the state. So I started asking people some questions of like, hey, what's, you know, wh why are you moving? And I got some answers that I expected, either new jobs or starting a new family. But then I started to get some answers that I, I didn't expect. So a lot of people, Massachusetts had become unaffordable or unlivable, or um, there's just s certain reasons here that they, um, either the culture or things like that, that they were choosing to move. And I thought that was a really unfortunate thing because these were, great people and they have, they had families here and uh, I, I really wanted those people to stay. <laughs> so, mm. um, and that's, you know, that's a really difficult task for a lot of people. So you think about it, moving across the country involves a lot of different things. You're pretty much packing your entire life up into a truck, all your precious belongings. Uh, your, if you have a family, you're, you're bringing your kids along, all those relationships, your friends, your family that you've built, you pretty much have to start from a whole new place in a whole new uh, in a whole, whole new state so um, pretty much as I saw that happening I, I said to myself I'm like oh that's that's pretty unfortunate that so many people are moving out I, I want those people to feel like they can stay here and live and thrive in Grafton okay I'll be very honest I, I, I have a very limited knowledge of the role and the process of how the sausage is made at planning board how does in your opinion, how does planning board help keep people in place? I don't. I can't imagine the planning board would be so powerful as to be able to sway someone's decision to move. How, how, do, how do the two things connect in your mind? Yeah. So as I was talking to people as well, there was a lot of. So I had a lot of feedback from all different sides. There was some concerns on the residential development side. Some felt like there was too much residential uh, development. I talked to builders. They felt like there was, <laughs> there was uh, not enough mm -hmm. commercial development. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you, you start to talk to, to different people and you start to um, uh, understand some of their problems. But yeah, I think really what we need to do is we need to just start getting people involved at the local level and um, you know, start getting involved that way. Mm -hmm. When you made the decision to run, other than your wife, whose advice did you seek? <laughs> yeah, so I, I talked to my family a little bit. My, you know, my dad has a little bit of background. There's a lot of people that, you know, question is like, hey, is this, are you sure this is something that you want to do? It mm. usually ends up causing a lot more, uh, you know, work than it can be worth sometimes. Mm. But it's it's something new. It's something exciting. I again, uh, my background is in financial planning and management too. So something that I felt like I could help contribute towards. Okay, that's, that seems like it would be a good fit, the financial side of, of planning a development or planning a project in town. Okay, I think I can see the pieces starting to fall together here. Yeah, um, so it's, it's, uh, it's funny that you say that too. So I, originally when I pulled papers, I pulled papers for the library trustee because I used to do financial planning for the Mary Baker Eddy Library in Boston okay. and pretty much done financial planning my, my whole career. And as I was, so originally I thought that would be a great fit for myself as I started talking to residents and started uh, learning about other issues in town and learning more about the planning board itself as well. Mm. I, um, 
I, I really started to get an interest towards that, and I thought that would be a, a great fit for me as well. In your opinion, do you think that when a big project is proposed that people have a tendency to kind of shade the budget down the scale rather than up the scale for fear that someone will just say, no, you can't do that? And do you think that really they should kind of shoot for the moon? Because you think of a project where X didn't get done or Y didn't get covered properly, and then the answer comes back, oh, well, we didn't plan for that. It wasn't in the budget. You know, so it's like, so how do you make the budget for a project that would go before planning board? You know, you, you would, I, would you advise people to, it's going to cost you a little more than you think. It's going to take you a little longer than you think. Yeah, so I, I think it's, it's, your plan is always as good as the inputs and the assumptions that go into it. So I think what you really need to do is you really need to identify where the risks are. So there's some things that you're going to plan for that are going to be pretty self-explanatory. They're not going to really change a whole lot. But then there's other parts of the plan or other parts of the project that could have a lot of variability and a lot of risk to them depending on what the inputs are. So I think what, you need to do, what we need to do is identify what those uh, inputs are or what those assumptions are that have a, a big risk component to them and really drill them down to make sure that we're evaluating them properly and building in the right contingencies when when needed. Mm. What, what type of topics on planning board really interest you? What type of uh, goals do you set for yourself when elected? Yeah, so it's uh, I think really everything. I mean, I, it, it, it's a lot of people don't deal with the stuff that the planning de board deals with on a regular basis. So I think it's, um, it crosses a whole <laughs> slew of different areas. So it's uh, interesting to learn. So I, I bring a lot to the table on the financial and uh, management and planning side. I think there's definitely a lot more around like the land use side that I can learn as well. So I think that's, that's a really interesting component to mm -hmm. it. So I'm, uh, I'm, ex I'm looking forward to, to bring together both those sides. Mm -hmm. Was there any particular project in town that really just caught your attention and you thought, I want to learn more about this. <laughs> yeah, so it's um, obviously there's a few projects going on in town. Some of them have been in uh, the pipeline for quite some time. I definitely noticed that as I was collecting signatures, there was definitely a lot of concern or a lot of conversation around the one of the housing developments going up around Pleasant Street. Um, there was a, a ZBA Zoning Board of Appeals meeting a few weeks ago and I was tuning into that and I saw about 30 residents from the neighborhood step up and kind of talk about how it would negatively impact their lives. Mm -hmm. There was a few people in support of it but you know I think those are those are good conversations to have. I think we need to to really listen to both sides and uh, look at the pros and cons and I think we really want to we really want to uh, put a focus on the residents that live here and make sure that we're not kind of trampli trampling on their existing life lifestyle here. Mm. So one of the questions I thought before we went on the air was um, fill in the blank. Without planning board, we get <laughs> uh, chaos, Uncontro <laughs> uncontrolled <laughs> chaos. <laughs> And I, I think that's a good point too, because I, I think that that's the that's a great that's the whole crux of the issue. Because w when we're looking at planning board, we're looking at land use, we're looking at where to to build projects, and there's more than one space to do that. And uh, I, I think what we want to do is we want to evaluate all the the pieces, all the the plans that we have, and really make sure that we're moving forward with the ones that make the most sense to graft. And I don't think just because it's the first one in the pipeline means that we should always move forward with the first one. There could be better ideas that come up. So I think, you know, without the planning board, you kind of get this uncontrolled, you know, it's, it's it, it, there, there's not as much process to it. And I think in, in this case, it's a good thing because we can really make sure that we hear both sides before mm -hmm. moving forward with something. The reason why that question popped into my head was I, years ago, I traveled to Japan to visit a friend and, and I was struck by the total, what appeared to me, the layman would be uh, the total lack of, <laughs> of planning that went into the, to the local neighborhoods and some of the some of the towns and the cities, because it seemed like there was no rhyme or reason. We're so used to in, in this country of the residences go here and the businesses go here and the farms are over here, and in Japan, my my experience was it was almost as if somebody took all the parts to the building set and just <laughs> tossed them out, and you got what you got. 
and that's why I asked the planning question because again as a layman and not knowing what planning did you can see the effects of what happens if there is no planning but clearly we all have a need for it I mean uh, as you said there's, there's totally a change. anyone that wants to see streets that aren't plans just uh, all you have to do is go visit the the city of Boston right, right next door because it's like <laughs> yeah. it looks like someone took a can of spaghetti yep, yep. and just just kind of threw it and decided that's where the roads are gonna be well I, I, I'm pretty certain the colonists didn't have a planning board no. but they probably could have used it <laughs> yeah. <to> <laughs> all right um, is there anything you want to touch on before I give you the opportunity to talk to the voters is there anything that you want to bring up uh, Anything um, that you may have overlooked, just make sure we're giving you fair and equal time. Yeah, no, just just um, really wanted to, to highlight kind of the story from the beginning. And, um, you know, I was looking, I had mentioned that I was talking to folks as I was doing the, the moving, and there was a lot more people leaving than coming in. And I s did some research because I wasn't sure if it was just anecdotal evidence. And in Massachusetts last year, there was 57,000 net residents that left the state as opposed to entering the state. Now, wow. um, but yeah, so so things like that, and I, I just want to, um, you know, really talk to people and, and f find out the re you know the main reasons why that's happening, and you know, making sure that we're changing those so that people can stay here and thrive here. Okay. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to address the people at home, and the people at home are represented by that camera right over there. And uh, I'll let you talk to them, and then we'll wrap it up. All right, sounds Take good. Take it away. All right. So my name's Jim Davidson. I'm running for planning board, and I've uh, I've really enjoyed living in Grafton and being your neighbor here. And unlike the unlike Massachusetts itself, Grafton has actually had a, a net inflow of residents, which is a great thing because that means there's more family and more families and more people to connect with every every year and growth is part of a healthy community and my job here is I want to make sure that we're growing in a sustainable way and I think that means putting value and really doing it in a way that's respectful to existing residents that are already here so as your as your choice for planning board I, I look forward to making sure that your voices are heard loud and clear here and uh, yeah, I, I look forward to uh, to working with you in the future. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Appreciate your time. Thanks. You've been watching Meet the Candidate. My guest today has been Jim Davidson, who's running for the open seat on the planning board. On behalf of all the talented people that work here at Grafton Community Television, that includes you, Bill. This is Meet the Candidate. Thank you for watching. I'm Bob Tatoma.